Hello everyone, you lot probably thinking, where have you been fam? Where have you been? I've been right here, I've been here at this desk that I speak to you from, but obviously I've been, you know, on other stuff at the moment and um, yeah, I, I definitely apologise for not doing the midweek videos for the past couple of weeks, but a man is only as good as his word and I made a commitment that if I've got a certain amount of likes, I will be doing a monthly UK dividend stock series and maintaining that each month. And so here it is, here it is. This video, I'm gonna talk about seven UK stocks that are going X div in June and will be paying their next div anytime from June, July, August, depending on the stock. So if you wanna know all of that plus more, please like, comment, subscribe, help the channel get to 6K subscribers. I probably would already be at 6K if I pulled my finger out and actually did a few more videos, but hey ho, you know, we're in the position that we're in right now. Please, please, please like the video. I would love to see 300 likes on this video and I will keep the series rolling for July, August, September, etc., etc. And we'll just keep that moving forward. So yeah, for those of you that are new to the series, new to the channel, the purpose of this video is for me just to kind of highlight and bring to the fore stocks that are still paying their dividend in the midst of the whole coronavirus situation, in the midst of loads of companies and um, businesses shutting and cutting their dividends and whatnot. So this is just to shine a light on companies that are still paying their dividend and particularly focusing on ones that are actually safe, steady companies as well. So they're genuine, potentially good investments for the long term as well, which is, you know, the focus for for this channel so you know i'm not advising anyone to buy any of these stocks all i'm trying to do is just to help you discover some stocks surface some stocks for you guys to think about and maybe to look into and to do your own research and obviously you know you get the bonus of the fact that they're going to be going exit very very soon so you know your next dividend payment will be within the next couple of months which is always going to be good now on my sheet i've got associated british foods national grid sainsbury's Intermediate Capital Group, Johnson Matthey, I've got Burberry and Coca-Cola HBC, all of those stocks technically should be going ex-div in June as well, however they've not been declared. So for those of you that are new to stock market and just want to know the terminology and what I'm talking about, ex-dividend basically means without dividend. It's like you know, your ex-girlfriend is when you're without your girlfriend in it, your last girlfriend, basically. So that's what it means. It means without dividend. And what that basically means is if you buy into a stock before the ex-dividend date, then that means you then are eligible for the next dividend payment. But from the ex-dividend date onwards, you're without the dividend for that next dividend payment. And you'd have to then invest for the next one effectively. And so the reason why I'm doing this is to show you that, look, if you invest before these dates, then the next dividend payments, which will be shortly, you can obviously find out. Now, there's two things you need to be mindful of when it comes to dividends. Uh, well, there's loads of things you need to be mindful of, but the two things I'm going to talk about is forecasted and declared. So typically, you know, you'll find that companies or businesses will forecast when a dividend is going to be paid. And the companies I just mentioned to you, their dates are still forecasted. So it isn't declared, it isn't guaranteed. And those ones may cut their dividend. They may change that date. You never know what's gonna happen because it has not been declared. But the ones in green, which is Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, Seven Trent, Vodafone, 3i, Experian and United Utilities, those ones are declared. So irrespective of what happens, you know, nuclear bomb could strike, you will get the next dividend payment providing you invest. So let's get straight into it. The first one I'm gonna talk about is Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust, SMT. It's going active on the 4th of June and their payment date will be the 1st of July. Currently the payment yield for annually is 0.45%. So it's a bit of a modest yield to be fair. Um, so, so the pros from my perspective is that they've provided very good returns, particularly over the last five years. Every period and interval that I've looked at, when you look at three months, six months, one one year, um, three years, five years, they've always provided a return and that's with and without dividend. And pretty much from a capital gain standpoint over the last five years, if you bought and you just held, you'd be sitting at 175% profit, which um, is obviously a decent amount of return. So, you know, it's been a good stock. If you've been dollar cost averaging into a stock like this, um, you generally will see it rise. I don't know what's gonna happen in the future, but that's historically what's happened. Um, from a value perspective as well, it seems to be very good value. So when you look at some of the valuation metrics, 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 
you know your price to books your price to sales your price to earners etc etc um they've been pretty good but from the con side of things pretty low yield at 0.45 percent so you know you're not going to make um copious amounts of money with the dividend yield at the moment i think you're going to make more money from a capital gain standpoint um, and also the payout ratio is five percent so a payout ratio is basically you know the amount of their equity that they basically pay out um to users and they can obviously retain some money in order to grow the business and in order to maybe pay their bosses more bonuses or do whatever they want with that money but there's a certain amount that they're going to portion off to um, investors now typically you'd want to see it between 35 to 55 percent then they're not giving that much money back to investors and it's kind of reflected as well in a, in a low dividend deal so they're already paying out about five percent hopefully that will increase in the future um but it does mean that from a dividend a pure dividend perspective you probably could get higher yields elsewhere however i will say from a cap capital gain standpoint this stock looks pretty decent um, a lot of the the fundamentals look pretty good and so yeah it's definitely one to watch and one to look into the next one is seven trend they're going extive on the 11th of june their payout is on the 17th of july and their current annual yield is 4.12 percent which is a decent yield so pros good yield the yield is decent at 4.12 percent you know it's more than you're going to get in your your flexi e-saver cash ice or whatever it is that you got with your bank also the growth expectation from the analysts that are monitoring this stock is about 20 percent over the next one to three years which is also good to see so you know it's a company that hopefully if analysts are correct and obviously they can be incorrect as well so it's, it is a forecast hopefully you'll see higher growth um as well with this company in the future some of the cons though is 150 percent payout ratio so you can also have it too far in the other way and what that basically means is that paying out from either their cash reserves or from debt um, in order to maintain their dividend yield and that's not obviously going to always be sustainable so they need to start making some more money so they don't actually do that so that could be a sign of the times currently with the corona situation i don't really know um i i don't really see how that could be plausible in this context because of the company that seven trend is but um you never know that could be potentially a sign of the times but it's definitely one to watch as well um also it's a little bit overvalued when you look at the same metrics in terms of trying to work out its price based off its assets and so forth it seems like the price is a little bit high at the moment and lastly we talk about this a lot high debt the debt seems pretty high um and so for me personally um i do invest in companies with debt um but i do think that where possible you know you try to look at safe companies that don't have debt because you know they're probably going to be better investments for the long term at least if you see them reducing their debt then at least that's a good sign the next one is vodafone vodafone voda 11th of june is the x div 7th of august is the payment date they're currently paying a 6.03 percent yield now I used to hold Vodafone as many of you guys know if you've been following the portfolio updates. I held Vodafone um, based off 5G thinking that that's going to, you know, um, really skyrocket. Didn't really do so. It was the it was the risk I took and um, it didn't pay off. However, something happened during the midst of it where they sold off part of their business, their Tawako business. When they sold off that business, um, the, the stock skyrocketed from that point. So I actually did make a bit of money when I did eventually sell Vodafone, but I didn't make it for the reason I thought I would make it for. So if you are new to invest in, you know, I, I've got this personal saying, I'm not saying this is science or fact, but my personal thing is that I would like to have at least a minimum of three reasons to invest into any one stock three reasons to invest into one stock i want to see three things that make me feel that it's a good reason to invest in that stock and at least if you know one or two of those things don't happen then maybe the third thing might might recover it um and so for every stock i try and have at least three reasons um i had reasons for vodafone um and obviously none of those reasons is the reason why it actually was a profitable sell for me but you know it still was a sell anyway i digress the pros is that it seems undervalued vodafone always seems undervalued just because the stock has been um, battered over the last five to ten years to be fair um, um, and of the analysts that are tracking Vodafone stock, 27.2% is the future growth expected over the next one to three years. Now, the cons is that it's provided negative returns over the last one to five years. Now, 
returns is always relative to when you actually buy the stock and when you sell the stock so when i say negative returns here i'm referring to anyone that may have bought the stock in the last five years and just held it but you might have bought it on you know wednesday the 13th um, in 2009 and sold it on i don't know wednesday the 30th of july or whatever and sold it on you know the 9th of september 2009 and made a profit because obviously the stock market goes up and down but i'm just saying over the long term um the returns broadly have been quite negative with vodafone also the debt is rising so even though they sold off their tabaco business which did reduce their debt and that was one of the reasons why they've done that somehow their debt is still rising over the over the period even after that point so their debt is rising and their equity is falling um, and that's when you look at things like the debt to equity ratio, which I think is a really important metric to look at. Um, and yeah, from that perspective, I personally think it's a con. It's definitely not a stock that I would personally go and buy again, but it doesn't mean it's a bad stock to each his own. And you know, definitely do your own research and you might find some positive things with Vodafone. The next one is 3i Infrastructure Group III. And I want to let you know that the ex dividend date is on the 11th of June and it's paying on the 17th of August. Now, the yield is 4.14%, which is a decent yield. Some of the pros with um, I is that they've provided very, very decent returns over all of the interval periods in the past. They're looking pretty undervalued and of the analysts that are tracking at 63.63% future growth, um, which is forecasted. Um, the only cons was marginally a bit of a high payout ratio. Um, I actually can't remember the figure so apologies but i think it was mm, probably surplus 90 percent or something along those lines but it might again be a sign of the times um, but when i looked at a lot of the metrics with 3i honestly it looked like a fantastic stock from its yield through the way it's growing its dividends through the way that its fundamentals are managed its earning potential um, it's still looking undervalued as a potential buy so you know out of all of the stocks i'm probably going to talk to you about today i would say that 3i is probably my biggest one to watch um, but definitely please 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 pretty please do your own research and um you know decide for yourself whether or not it's an investable opportunity the next one is experian expn they are going x div on the 25th of june and they're paying out on the 24th of july apologies that's that's wrong it should be the 24th of july um they're paying a dividend yield of 1.34 percent annually now some of the pros their past performance again similar to some of the ones i've mentioned have had a very very strong past performance and i think businesses like experian just kind of benefit from scale um and they do really well with you know what their type of model and having limited competition now uh, i'm going to talk about the competition side a little bit you know some of the cons is a little bit overvalued um based of their their current share price versus some of their metrics um and again their debt is rising but their equity isn't falling it's staying stagnant which is good and the reason why i think there's a correlation there is that i think the equity is staying stagnant because there's a lot more um credit reference agencies and so forth that are coming to the fore or or different products and services that you can actually get credit checks from uh, so experian are kind of divesting their approach where they're trying to integrate with different platforms and give you you know free credit checks with certain platforms and those platforms are paying experian in bulk um in order for that and that's how they're probably maintaining their equity levels um, but they're probably rising a lot of debt in order to kind of manipulate some of those deals or to provide some of those integrations or technology or maybe some of those other stuff that they're potentially invested in also i think because of that competitive landscape you know it's definitely one to look at maybe there will be days when you know experian maybe not null and void i would never say it'll be null and void but it may have less of um a less of a what's the word i'm looking for less of an importance shall i say so like when i was obviously buying my house etc i would check my credit rating reg on a regular basis and make sure that you know and i used to pay for it so i would check my credit rating on a regular basis and make sure that my my credit was you know up to scratch or whatnot so that there was no hiccups when i bought my house or whatnot and um now obviously since then i, I don't think i've ever checked it since do you know what i mean 
um, but it, it all depends on when you are with life and so forth now with the way the housing market's going um, with the way that you know the economy's going at the moment as well um, I think over the next year the next couple of years you know the housing market is going to take a bit of a decline so people aren't going to be looking for mortgages and, and things like that maybe once we've existed might be thinking about remortgaging or locking themselves into a deal or whatnot but um, you know I think maybe the reliance and experience this is all conjecture by the way but the reliance and experience I, I, I don't really know I don't really know but I haven't looked into it that deeply I still think it's a fantastic business as a business and what it does um, but I think you know the landscape the competitive landscape is definitely changing for it so it's going to be interesting one to watch but they're still paying their dividend which is what you guys want to know the last one to speak of is united utilities uu and uu is paying their ex div on the 25th of june sorry they're going ex on the 25th of june and they're paying the div on the 3rd of august they're paying a 4.88 percent yield um not much to really speak of with united utilities if i'm honest you know again future growth is expected to be about 25.6 percent from the analysts that are tracking this um but the performance is, is just kind of been a bit mute really it's been a bit meaty like not much to really talk about there it's been a bit of a flat performance generally speaking and the fundamentals is like they're not worse they're not terrible but they're not amazing so yeah i, I personally wouldn't invest in this it would just be kind of a stock that I probably wouldn't see that much movement, which, you know, I like to see movement either way, to be fair. Um, and yeah, that's, that's just kind of my view on it. So yeah, those are the stocks, United Utilities, Experian, 3i, Vodafone, 7 Trend, and Scottish Mortgage Investment Trust. All of those stocks are going ex-dividend in June, and they'll be paying their dividend anytime from late June, July through to August as well. But please, please, please do your own research um, when looking into any of these stocks. Um, and also the ones that I mentioned here, you know, they also potentially may still go active in June. It's just that at the time of recording this video, they have not been declared. So I, I don't really want to kind of mention stocks that have not declared their dividend just because by the time you're watching, they, you might, you know, potentially invest and not get a dividend, etc. Um, so yeah, that's the situation with, with the rest of those stocks. So yeah, hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, like comment subscribe and i will catch you probably tomorrow with a portfolio update take care guys peace